A few weeks later, though, I awoke to the sound of an argument in the kitchen. My grandmother's voice barely audible, followed by my grandfather's deep growl. I opened my door to see Toot, that's my grandmother, entering their bedroom to get dressed for work. I asked her what was wrong. Nothing. Your grandfather just doesn't want me to drive me to work this morning, that's all. I entered the kitchen and saw Gramps was muttering under his breath. He poured himself a cup of coffee as I told him that I'd be willing to give Toot a ride to work if he was feeling tired. This was a bold offer, for I did not like to wake up early. He scowled at my suggestion. That's not the point. She just wants to make me feel bad. I'm sure that's not it, Gramps. Of course it is. He sipped from his coffee. She's been catching the bus ever since she started at the bank. She said it was more convenient. And now, just because she gets pestered a little, she wants to change everything. Toot's diminutive figure hovered in the hall, peering at us from behind her bifocals. That's not true, Stanley. I took Toot into the other room and asked her what had happened. A man asked me for money yesterday while I was waiting for the bus. That's all? Toot's lips pursed with irritation. He was very aggressive, Barry, very aggressive. I gave him a dollar and he kept asking. If the bus hadn't come, why, I think he might have hit me over the head. Gramps was rinsing his cup when I returned to the kitchen. His back was turned to me. Listen, I said, Gramps, why don't you just let me give her a ride after all? She seems pretty upset. By a panhandler? Yeah, I know, but it's probably a little scary for her seeing some man block her way. It's really no big deal. He turned around and I saw now that he was shaking. It is a big deal. It's a big deal to me. She's been bothered by men before. You know why she's so scared this time? I'll tell you why. Before you came in, she told me the fellow was black. He whispered the word. That's the real reason why she's bothered. And I just don't think that's right. His words were like a fist in my stomach, and I wobbled to regain my composure. In my steadiest voice, I told him that such an attitude bothered me too, but assured him that Toot's fears would pass and that we should give her a ride in the meantime. Gramps slumped into a chair in the living room and said he was sorry he had told me. Before my eyes, he grew small and old and very sad. I put my hand on his shoulder and told him that it was all right. I understood. We remained like that for several minutes in painful silence. Finally, he insisted that he drive Toot after all and, I, and struggled up from his seat to get dressed. After they left, though, I sat on the edge of my bed and thought about my grandparents. They had sacrificed again and again for me. They had poured all their lingering hopes into my success. Never had they given me reason to doubt their love, and I doubted if they ever would. And yet I knew that men who might easily have been my brothers could still inspire their rawest fears. If I'm in New York City uh, trying to catch a cab, I can't hold up a little sign saying, I'm multicultural. Yeah. Well, you know, this is only because I'm, I'm decked out for this reading. Now, you know, if I, if I had my, my homie look, then, uh, then I might have some problems. So, so I, I do work through the anger that I personally experience in my own life. But as I said, I think it, it gets uh, uh, transformed into uh, an insistence on creating a politics that can address our past. Uh, I am the whole country, uh, and you know, I am. I remain optimistic about America. I I remain. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, I believe in the 
that we can appeal to the better angels of our nature. And I think that, you know, my wife likes to say, she, uh, a black woman who grew up in the south side of Chicago all her life, working class family, she, uh, she likes to say, and I think this is true, that black folks are the most forgiving people because they've had the most practice. Uh, and, and, and I think that's true. I, I, you know, the, the, this whole notion of black anger and black rage, uh, you know, I think uh, is greatly overstated considering uh, what a brutal experience it has been in this country. And my, I am always struck by how, even though black folks may talk about white folks, sort of in the generic sense, that most black folks always have an open hand to individual whites. And that if there was any sense that this country was making a serious effort to address the problems that have resulted from slavery and segregation in this country and that continue, uh, that I think you would see an outstretched arm from the other side. It requires the whites to participate too. And see any evidence of that? Likely. Well, you know, the, uh, that's where my optimism comes in, and, and maybe this is naivete. Sometimes, you know, black folks think I'm a little naive. Uh, but I, I guess I think that uh, basically Americans are decent people. I think the problem with Americans, and this is obviously a large generalization, so you will excuse me as I generalize about Americans. Um, Americans don't like to sacrifice. This generation in particular does not like to sacrifice. Our whole politics is geared towards not wanting to sacrifice and trying to do everything on the cheap. And solving the racial problems in this country at this stage has very much to do with economics and class and dealing with entire generations and segments of the society that uh, need help. And that's going to cost some money. And that's going to require some sacrifice. I think that the politi current political climate can change. And I think that if you talk to young people, um, I think there have been changes. Uh, so I'm not one of these people who says that uh, nothing's changed. Uh, I think it's the best of times and the worst of times uh, for race relations in this country.